everyone. My name is Prachi. I lead the ads engineering team at Geo Hotstar. And for this year's DMOX, I'm one of your ad talks. Geo Hotstar is an OTT video streaming platform. We're based out of India. We're available on mobile apps, web, and connected TVs. We offer content that spans acro across TV shows, movies, and live sports. And we serve a very diverse audience with content in around 20 plus languages from a library of around 320,000 hours of content. Our biggest scale test is live sports, especially IPL. IPL stands for Indian Premier League. It's the world's biggest T20 cricket tournament. Think of it as the cultural impact of Super Bowl, but spread across weeks of daily matches. In 2025 this year, we saw a peak concurrency of around 55 million concurrent users who are watching the IPL match at the same time. And the highest ever on our platform has been around 62 million, again in live cricket for Champions Trophy this year. And today, I'm going to talk about the journey that we had at Geo Hotstar for ad insertion and live streaming. But before we do that, for those less familiar with cricket, let me set the scene for you. A typical cricket match spans for around three hours with two innings of 20 overs each. The stream itself is present in around 12 plus languages and multiple camera angles like bowler cam, batter cam, and player cam, where the camera essentially follows the player on the field. But unlike sports with fixed commercial timeouts, cricket's ad break structure is much less predictable. Yes, there are some planned slots, which are the breaks between each overs, but an over in itself isn't a fixed time break. Certain fast bowlers can finish their over very quickly, while other overs can take much longer to finish, either due to umpire reviews, tense moments in the games, or strategic timeouts. To make things even more challenging, the viewership itself isn't steady. Certain players or key moments can drive massive spikes in concurrency as millions join the stream at the same time. So when we talk about inserting ads in live cricket, we're really talking about managing irregular, dynamic, and sometimes really short durations of ad breaks, where even milliseconds can make the difference between missed opportunity and ad revenue. Now, let's talk a little bit about various methods of ad insertion, starting with the first one, which is CSAI, or client-side ad insertion. In this model, the client app essentially runs a two-player strategy one player for the content stream and another separate player for playing the ad creator and hoping that they stay in sync. Mm -hmm. The trigger for indicating an ad break is usually a SCUTTY 35 marker, which is embedded in the live feed. When an ad break occurs, the content player pauses and the ad player spins up. The client makes a call to the ad server, it fetches the relevant ad creator, and then that creator plays in the ad player. Once that's done, the control is handed back to the content player. Now, all those CSAI works, but it comes with its challenges. The first one being that because the call to ads is made separately, they are more susceptible to ad blockers. They're easy to detect and block. You also get buffering risks, because if the ad fails to load on a low-powered device or weak network, then the user either sees nothing or your playback can stall. And finally, your user experience sort of feels clunky. Ad feels, ads feel bolted on because it's literally two different players switching back and forth on your client. So while CSAI gave the industry direct measurement and control in the early days, as live streaming grew in scale and complexity, we needed something that was much more seamless and resilient. And that's where SSAI came in. Instead of CSAI's two-player model, SSAI shifts that work to the server. Here, the server takes in the original content manifest and then rewrites it to include the ad segments. The client now sees a single stream with ads and video delivered together. When the SSAI system sees the SCUTTY marker, it makes a call to the ad server, it fetches a relevant ad creator, and then rewrites the manifest so that the ad segments can play seamlessly inside the stream. On a high level, there are three ways in which SSAI ads could be inserted by the server. The first one being spot ads, where the ads are burnt directly into the playout. This means that everybody on the stream gets the same ad. And this format is often used for global sponsorships or fixed placements. The second one is cohort level ads, where you group your users into a bunch of cohorts, and then every cohort gets a personalized ad. And the third one is one is to one stitching, where your SSAI server is stitching a unique manifest for every user. 
Now, SSAI solves a bunch of issues that we discussed for CSAI. Ads can't be literally, not literally, but can't be easily skipped or blocked because they're part of the same stream. Also, there's no sync drift because everybody rejoins the stream at the same time. Even low-powered devices can handle this playback because they are decoding a single stream. They don't know if there's ads or content in the stream. And because SSAI needs a single player, the overall user experience feels seamless similar to broadcast TV. SSAI was a major leap forward in live streaming. It gave us broadcast-like reliability while still leaving enough room for personalization. Now, at GeoHotstar, we built our SSAI infrastructure in-house, so we had control over the entire pipeline. The live stream comes in from production into our playout systems, essentially the control room where the operators manage the live stream and insert ad markers. A playout operator typically monitors two feeds. The first one is the production feed, which is what ends up going live. And the second one is a director's feed, which runs about a few seconds ahead. This early view gives us just enough time to react and insert ad markers precisely. From playout, the stream passes to our origin servers, where it becomes the source for downstream processing. This is where we layer cohorts. Instead of every user getting a unique manifest, we group users into a large group of cohorts based on targeting parameters like age, gender, location, device type, etc. When the CDN requests a manifest for a given cohort, the, the in-house stitching service steps in. It talks to the ad server. It fetches the ads for the relevant cohort and then rewrites the manifest to include those ad segments. Finally, these stitched segments are pushed to the CDN so that each cohort gets a personalized stream. Now, SSAI for the longest time solved a bunch of playback issues for us, but it also came with its own challenges, both in terms of our streaming infra and with monetization. Let's start with the infra challenges first. The number of manifests that our stitching service was producing wasn't just one constant number. It grew as a factor of the number of streams multiplied by the number of qualities that in that stream multiplied by the number of cohorts that we supported. And once your cohort reaches a few hundred thousands, this number explodes really fast. This creates two big issues. The first one being that the CDN of uh, the cache offload at the CDN decreases. Instead of a large number of users getting the same manifest, everyone's now pulling their slightly different copy from the CDN. This kills the cache hit ratio. Second, the origin shield at the CDN is now spending a lot of time in the compute just to serve all of these manifests. And sure, in theory, you can take this to one is to one uh, SSI stitching per user level, but back in stitching for tens of millions of users in real time, is, it's a difficult problem to solve. Now, on the monetization side, because SSAI works at a cohort level, we lose granularity. Imagine an advertiser wants to target a cohort of women in Mumbai, but if the cohort that you support in your ad system is only women in, say, metro cities, then everybody in that cohort ends up getting the same ad. That's a lot of targeting precision left on the table. And since campaigns run at a cohort level, performance campaigns that need precise per user targeting and conversion tracking, they can't operate to full potential. Similarly, reach and frequency campaigns become difficult to execute because you do not control the delivery on an impression level. This also means that programmatic pipelines uh, like open exchange, they become difficult to integrate because they depend on one is to one matching. Programmatic advertising essentially is an ecosystem where ad inventory is bought and sold at real time. Advertisers bid on who the user is, their user context, and the campaign goals to decide what to bid and when. But to participate in programmatic advertising, your ad server has to support per user impression delivery. That's not enough precision for the programmatic bidders if instead of saying, here's a user in Mumbai who's watching in English, you end up saying, here's a group of Metro English viewers who are watching in a language. There's also the problem of over-delivery. Imagine this case where an advertiser bought one million impressions from you, but the time that you want to deliver that ad, the concurrency of your cohort is 10 million. And you end up spraying the ad across the entire cohort, which is okay for the advertiser, but not so great for our business. And finally, there's no way to enforce frequency capping. 
In a one is to one setup, you can guarantee that a user sees an ad only two or three times. But in a cohort based setup, one user might see the ad seven times, while another user may see it just once, depending on when they join the stream. So while SSAI gave us reliability and control, it also put real ceilings in the way that we could utilize our remnant inventory and how much infra we could scale the solution to. So this brings us to the next step in the journey, which is server guided ad insertion. The key idea here is that the stream remains the same for everyone. What changes is how the ads get delivered. Instead of the server pre-stitching the ads for a large number of users, the server sends back a common manifest with ad opportunities marked in it, either via SCSI 35 tags or HLS interstitials or even MPEG XLink queues. When a break arrives, the client follows the manifest. It makes a request to the ad system. And at that moment, the ad server decides which ad to show the, to this particular user at a particular time. This means that the manifest itself doesn't blow up into thousands of variants. It's cache friendly, it's common across users, but the ad segments delivered can vary. And an important point to note here is that even though the call is made on the client side, we are still operating in a single player world. Ads and contents are just segments in the same pipeline. There's no juggling happening between players like CSAI. Now, what does this architecture give us and what does this complicate? On the benefit side, it's a huge win for scalability. Since your manifest has a single version, it can easily be cached on the CDN. The CDN also now needs to scale only for network and not for compute. And because we have separated the delivery of content and ads, both of your infra can scale independently. On the monetization side, we've unlocked the biggest issue, which is one is to one serving. You can now do everything that we spoke about in the previous slides, including frequency caps, one is to one serving, programmatic pipelines, and even reach and frequency campaigns. But SGI isn't without its challenges. It's still network dependent. The client must fetch the ads quickly or the playback can stall. And lastly, full adoption of SGI requires consistent support across all platforms to make it a truly universal solution. Now, when we began our SGI journey a couple of years back, SGI was still evolving in the industry. I believe it still is. Apple had just introduced HLS interstitials, and MPEG was proposing usage of X-Link for ad signaling. But at the time, most open source players did not have native support for these features. A vast majority of our user base is on Android, where we use ExoPlayer to stream HLS for live cricket. Our Android app already had a custom ExoPlayer fork that was parsing HLS manifest for normal playback, so the cost of parsing the manifest was already being incurred. We added a lightweight logic and a trigger into that hook to intercept the ad markers and trigger our logic so that there's no additional overhead. We also had an in-house stitching service that we just spoke about in a couple of previous slides, which handled manifest and ad merging at the server. For SGAI, we exported that stitching logic into a client-side library and added it as a layer on the client. This client library acts as a manifest interceptor it's completely decoupled from the player and lets both player and this library evolve independently. This architecture also lets us do multi-CDN controls like routing ad segments and content to different CDNs based on whatever network bandwidth you've received from your CDNs. Beyond video ads, the same signaling mechanism can also trigger companion rendering, L-bands, or even uh, on-screen overlays making the framework much more extensible. And the biggest one, because our core logic is independent of the player, the same solution can be plugged into multiple platforms with minimal adoption and minimal issues or the bandwidth needed, which sets, up, sets us up for broader device coverage going forward. Here's how it works. The player receives a pristine manifest with SCSI 35 markers. Our client-side library intercepts that manifest and calls a middleware service. That middleware service talks to the ad server to get ads for the user. It fetches the master and the child manifest and then returns the relevant ad segments to the client. The client library then assembles those ad segments into the manifest, which is handed back to the player. The stitching that we do on client side is deliberately lightweight. It is only taking the ad segments returned by the middleware and it's inserting them into a temporary manifest and then handing it back to the player. 
Now, once we moved to SGI, uh, the biggest challenge that we faced was at the ad server. Imagine an IPL break in which there's 50 million people watching the match and an ad break occurs. When the SCATI marker hits, every single one of that client wants to talk to our ad server to get ads at the same time. Of course, this creates a thundering herd problem and re results in multi-million RPS at our ad server. One option that our team explored was to add a jitter on the client side. When the player detects a SCATI marker, it usually has few seconds of content already buffered. This window gives us a flexibility to add small and dynamic jitter on the client and contact the ad server when it's not under, under heavy load. But the tricky part here is to tune that jitter value very carefully. Too little jitter and the spike remains, too big jitter and then you wouldn't have enough time to stitch those segments. Another approach is prefetching the ads for the following break. Instead of waiting until the SCATI marker arrives to talk to your ad server, you could fetch ads for the following break. But the important part here is when do you prefetch so that your ad server has had enough time to process the inventory and make the right ad decisions. Looking ahead, there are three big directions for us. The first one is extending SGI beyond just Android. The manifest interceptor could be integrated to other platforms since it's independent of the player and uh, adoption across platforms is a key step for us. Second is enabling longer DVR windows which need additional storage, latency, and measurement challenges that require a lot of smarter coordination between the CDN, player, and the ad system. And finally, using this manifest interceptor just beyond ads, you could use it for personalized replays, um, alternate commentary feeds, and who knows, we might be in a world where not just personalized ads are the norm, but every user could stream their own personalized version of the game. Thank you.